Hello everyone. In the last session, we will discuss about the power flow of the salient pole alternator. In that, we will get the final equations are like this. The power is can be divided into two forms. One is electromagnetic power. Another one is the reluctance power. Right. So we can extend this analysis is when synchronous motor is connected to infinite bus bar. The synchronism is maintained by acting as a reluctance motor. For example, if we have, if generally we have connected a synchronous motor, so synchronous motor is generally it will be applied by the three phase supply, so it will rotate. Okay. If the excitation will be failed, for example, so this is the exit uh, DC supply will be failed, but the motor will be continuously rotate with synchronous speed by this reluctance motor. So here the synchronism is maintained by the reluctance motor. That is the importance of the reluctance motor. So here, here we can simply say that. So we can simply say that the final that value is like this. So when, right, when del equal 45 degrees, the maximum power is del 1. Just look at here. When they substitute here, del value is 45, then it become sin 2 into 45. That means sin 90, sin 90 means 1. Then this power, the reluctance power will become the maximum power. Become the maximum power. Next. Next point is when machine is operated on bus bar, when excitation fails, the machine absorbs the reactive power to produce the working. Rotor will rotate at the synchronous speed. So rotor will rotate at the synchronous speed. So if the excitation fails, IF value will become the zero, then the EMF induced will also become the zero. But rotor will continuously rotate. Rotor having some rotation. Rotor having some rotation. Right. The reluctance machine is also acts as unexcited synchronous machine. Hence, rotate with the synchronous speed without excitation. The reluctance machine can be represented with the another name that is the unexcited synchronous machine. That means there is no excitation there is no excitation hence rotate with the synchronous speed rotate with the synchronous speed without the excitation we will not give any excitation so that's why when here the field current will zero then the emf induced is also the zero here right next armature takes active power from infinite bus bar okay we have the infinite bus bar is there from this it will take active power it produces rotating armature magnetic field it produces a rotating magnetic field rmf but rotor at synchronous speed rotates with the rotor rms so there is no relative speed so there is no relative speed between this no induced emf on the rotor so the problem is here here excitation fails okay and it will take the supply it will take the supply so here the armature is there here the armature is there right this is the supply r y b is the supply so then the supply these are connected in three phase so here the rotating magnetic field is produced but rotor also rotates with the synchronous speed when both are rotated with the synchronous speed, the voltage induced on the rotor will zero. Because to produce any EMF, it should have relative speed. There is no relative speed between the stator RMF and rotor flux. So there is no induced EMF on the rotor. On the rotor. Okay. Next is next topic is the power angle curves power angle curves here 
power angle curves means it is relation between the power and the load angle name itself this is that to power and the load angle so these power angle curves are two types because the synchronous machine also two types one is cylindrical rotor machine the another one is the another one is the salient pole rotor machine so look at for the cylindrical rotor machine for the cylindrical rotor machine directly i am writing the active power active power value is like this that is ev by xs into sin del ev by xs into sin del so if you draw the uh, curve between the this is the load angle curve and the power that, that is like this so initially at zero degrees the power is also zero because sin zero is zero and at 90 degrees power will reaching as the maximum power how it is maximum power just take it as just take it like this just substitute the del value 90 degrees across it whenever we are substituting 90 degrees then p is become ev by xs by sin 90 value 1 okay so then we can take it as power value will be the maximum power power value will be the maximum power next take the del value is 30 degrees then p equal to e v x s sin 30 sin 30 means the power value will become sin 30 means 1 by 2 remaining is the p max so at 30 degrees exactly so if it is the 30 degrees then power will be half maximum power of p maximum power okay so maybe at 45 45 means here that power will be like this power will be like this right yeah so finally uh, if you take the power values are uh, for the motor is there for example if the generally active power will active power always positive for generators generators then then active power is negative for motors it will become the motors okay so generally when the system is uh, between 0 degrees to 90 degrees the load angle in between 0 degrees to 90 degrees the system the it will be acting as the stable region will be acting as the stable region if it is 90 more than 90 to 90 to 180 degrees that means in this region this is the 90 and this is the 180 in between these two regions 90 and 180 then the maximum power is decreases then it is called it will be in unstable region it will be acting as the unstable region okay unstable region so better to acting as per for alternators the load angle should be between the 0 and 90 if it crosses 90 then the maximum power will be decreases the maximum power will be decreases next for salient pole machine for salient pole machine the power will be like this it is the combination of two powers one is ev by xs into sin del is the one power the another power is half pi 1 by x q minus 1 by x t 1 by x t into sin 2 del that means it is the combination of uh, electromagnetic power and the another power is the reluctance power reluctance power okay so and 
so this curve is known as the this curve is known as the electromagnetic power this curve is known as the electromagnetic power and this half of the curve this curve is known as the reluctance power this curve is known as the reluctance power yes and this combination of these two curves the power will be like this and at this point the power will be increases increases and it will reach the peak value here it will reach the peak value here then after that peak value here then after that it will be down then after that it will be down like this here also here also it will be reach the peak value it will reach the peak value and then after it will be downs it will be downs so this curve is known as the total power this curve is known as the total power electromagnetic power the combination of reluctance power electromagnetic power and relay. the final the curve is like this so i will again draw this to understand clearly to understand clearly like this so this is the combination of electromagnetic power and the reluctance power so here generally the maximum p max is obtained for the 60 to 70 degrees just look at here uh, this is the 90 position this area we will get the p maximum so just increase it at this we will get the p maximum power maybe this load angle is 60 to 70 degrees but in case of cylindrical power cylindrical rotor maximum power is obtained for the 90 degrees but in case of salient pole alternator we are getting for the 60 to 70 degrees okay right next the steady state stability is more for salient pole alternator synchronous machine this is the most important the steady state stability is high for the salient pole synchronous machine okay this is about this is about the power angle curves for the cylindrical machine and salient pole machine okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you